42 cases of H1N1 in the United States in over 40 states and two deaths, including the first adult death. Since the alarm was raised, this administration has acted decisively and responsibly to prevent spread of virus and to prevent undue alarm among the American people. On Tuesday, after more than 545 school closings that sent more than 341,000 children and 21,000 teachers and staff home, federal officials recommended that schools with suspected H1N1 flu cases no longer needed to close. This is good news. Still, public health officials expect this virus will reach all 50 states. Experts also warn that the H1N1 or other viruses may hit harder and stronger by this coming fall. As we look forward, we have an obligation to examine how this unpredictable outbreak has tested schools, child care centers, colleges, and workplaces. In many cases, our morphing public health needs simply don't align with our education and business needs. Today's hearing gives us an opportunity to look at these challenges while they're fresh and to determine what lessons we can learn to prepare for future pandemics. This outbreak has proven that a pandemic can have ripple effects throughout our entire communities. Many schools are still closed but preparing to reopen. Colleges and child care programs have also closed. School, excuse me, teachers and faculties have to figure out how to maintain student learning in the face of closures. There is also no one coordinated system for reporting cases in schools. Education agencies are currently tracking information through county health officials, the CDC, and news reports. There are no, no specific reporting requirements for districts. As a result, agencies may not have the most complete information about what's happening on the ground. The ripple effect is evident in workplaces too. Employers and workers have questions about how to protect themselves, their families, their businesses, and their jobs in the event of a flu outbreak. While the Occupational Safety, Safety and Health Administration has issued guidance and even has some specific standards relevant to pandemic flu, it does not have a mandatory comprehensive standard to, for protecting workers from airborne transmissible diseases. As we will hear more about today, this is especially troubling for workers on the front lines of pandemics. If nurses, doctors, and first responders and other health care workers get sick, they can't treat flu victims or anyone else in the community. If they believe their workplace is unsafe, they may stay home to protect their own health. Sufficient worker protections must be in place to ensure that our health care system has the capacity to deal with widespread viral outbreaks. We also want to know what measures businesses are and should be taking to prepare for pandemic outbreaks, including how to deal with sick employees. Current federal leave policies only cover some workers. Paid leave isn't required to ensure sick workers stay home. And the situation where a working parent has child care problems due to school closures aren't covered. Finally, we also need to examine what preventative actions employers and employees should be taking, like providing training on flu prevention, what businesses can do to keep operating if a pandemic hits. Especially in this economy, it's critical to ensure that students can keep learning, businesses can keep providing services to our community. I would again like to thank all of our witnesses for taking their time out of your vital work in these areas to join us and I look forward from hearing from your testimony.